following movie is going to show you how to pressure inject an actively leaking crack. And the reason we use the uh, pressure injection here is, as you can see, there's water coming out of this particular crack. And it's very difficult to do the traditional uh, epoxy injection through the face using a surface seal because the surface seal will not attach to ports when the wall is wet. So what we're going to do is we're going to drill it at diagonal and pick this crack up about halfway through. So we go off to the side of the crack. In this case, an 8-inch wall, you can go off to the side about 4 inches and shoot at a 45-degree angle. But there's a lot of different ways to accomplish that same thing. And here you drill first straight at the wall to create a little bit of a pilot hole, maybe 3 eighths inches in, and then angle the drill so that you get an angled hole that intersects the crack at the halfway point. And we're going to do this about every 8 inches all the way up the wall. You want to bore out the very start of the hole a little bit. The packers tend to be 3 eighths or a half inch. They're actually in millimeters, so they're going to be slightly bigger than 3 eighths or half inch. And the gasket on it's about an inch long recessed into the wall, so maybe bore that out just a little bit in the beginning there, and it'll slide in much easier when you go to put the packer in. And essentially, after we're done drilling these holes, We're going to slide a packer in, into this hole, and then we're going to screw it tight so that it wedges itself in. Now at the end of the packer will be a zerk fitting, and we're going to slide the gun over that zerk fitting, the coupler on the end of the gun. But as you can see here, we're continuing to drill holes. It should only take a few minutes in this particular case. Now there's the gun we're going to use. You'll take the top off it. It's got a plunger on a rod. We'll pull that rod back. And as you notice, it's got a notch in the end where the rod will cock to the side and stay open. You want to make sure you don't release that rod until you put the cap back on it. Once you put the liquid in there, if you release that rod, it'll pop all the liquid out all over the place, make a mess. So just. Uh, it's easy to forget, but go ahead and cap it before you release that rod. Now we're going to take the packers, slide them in, gasket side goes into the wall, the zerk fitting will face you. Slide it in so as the gasket's completely in the wall. You want to leave enough room so that you can tighten and you'll see the end of it has a hex on it. You want to leave enough room so you can tighten it, so don't slide it in so far that you can't get a nut driver over the top of it. Now when we tighten them down, we don't want to. We just want them snug. If you really wrench them, they'll snap. It's not the end of the world. You just have to drill through it, do another one, but uh, just snug, but don't over tighten. Sometimes you have to tap them a little bit. Like I said, they're a little bit bigger than 3 ace. In this case, we're using a 3 ace. Wrench them down again. Don't over tighten, but you can see here you get a, a pretty good turn on it. It'll expand and wedge its way in. I always work with gloves and glasses on with the urethane. You're going to Teflon every threaded joint. The urethane's thin, it'll come back out those threads once it's under pressure, so we'll Teflon. And then do not fill the gun all the way to the very top. Leave yourself at least an inch, maybe an inch and a half room. Because once you cap it, you're going to release the plunger. It needs a little bit of space in there. And then we're going to tap on the top here.
And once the Teflon's on, just hand tighten the gun also. Get it nice and snug. Release the handle. And then we're going to put the coupler that's on the end of this gun right over the Zerk fitting. And it can hand tighten that coupler too. Get a nice snug fit. When you go from one Zerk fitting to the next, you want to release that coupler a little bit before you pull it off. You want to be delicate with it. Don't manhandle it. Otherwise, it will begin to leak. If you do get a leak between the coupler and the Zerk fitting, sometimes you can change the angle that we're coming at the crack with the gun slightly, and you'll get a little bit better fit. So maybe come in from the side a little bit or from the top with the angle of the gun, and sometimes it'll fit a little better. And then just make sure that coupler is nice and snug. And we're going to feed the material. It'll go in real easy while it's filling the drill hole. And then you'll feel resistance. Once you feel resistance, you've met the crack. Just steadily and lightly start feeding. Continue to feed the urethane in until you feel that urethane pass through that crack. You'll notice the resistance will lessen, and then you can begin feeding more material into the crack. So to repeat, you'll fill the drill hole easily, then you'll feel resistance, back off a little bit, Put it in a little less quickly, and then once you feel it past the your, the crack in, in the hole, go ahead and give about 20 pumps into that Zerk fitting, and then you can move on and start the process again, and just move up the wall. You won't see urethane necessarily come out of every inch of that crack. As long as you get 20 or 30 good cranks on that handle into each Zerk fitting, you should be fine. That foam expands considerably. Probably seven, eight hundred times its size, so it's pretty user friendly. It's pretty it's uh relatively mistake proof. Again notice we're moving nice and easy right here because we're starting to feel the resistance. Now we've gotten past the crack the initial entrance to the crack and just can crank away. And that's it, you move up the wall and, and you're done, it'll displace the water and, and you'll have a completed repair all the way through the wall and with a flexible product you shouldn't have a problem again.